In the previous few videos, we've been using quite a bit of our brain to help use math and complex node setups to create satisfying results. So today, we're going to give our brain a little break and let artificial intelligence help us through the process. In general, this video is just an inspiration as to what you could be using artificial intelligence for in Blender. We'll be using three different artificial intelligence software, which is Microsoft's Bing, OpenAI's ChatGPT, and Google's Bard. With that, we'll make slight comparisons between the three and let's just see what they can do for us. So you can open whichever AI software you want and type in messages to write code for Blender. So Blender uses Python. So you can say, write me a Blender code to create a lemniscate out of cubes. Remember, a lemniscate is that infinity symbol. And let's see what ChatGPT makes of this particular statement. So you hit run and ChatGPT instantly gives you a code. So now you have to click copy code and then go to Blender. In Blender, you can bring your cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the text editor. Here you can press this plus button to create a new text document and then press Control V to paste in the code. After which you can just bring your cursor to this toolbar and scroll till you get the run symbol and run the script. Once you run the script, you should be able to get your result. Now, clearly we did not get a lemniscate shape. We got just a circle. So the powerful part about this AI is you can always go back and say, can you modify the script to create a lemniscate shape? Run the prompt and it should update it for you. Now let's copy this. Let's go back to Blender, press AX and delete everything in the 3D scene, select everything here, delete control V and run it. So now we get a lemniscate shape, but there's still a few issues with it. However, it's working better. Essentially, let's try the exact same thing using some other software. So let's try Bing AI. I've said write a blender code to create a lemniscate shape made of cubes. Let's run the prompt. And from experience, Bing AI takes a lot more time compared to chat GPT. And often it just says, okay, we weren't able to create a lemniscate shape made of cubes in blender. However, Bing AI has done this for me multiple times in the past. So in case this happens, go ahead and just change your prompt by a little bit, right? Blender code to create lemniscate made up of many smaller cubes. And from what I've seen, Bing AI generally gives smaller code compared to ChatGPT, but let's see if this one works. Let's press copy to copy the code, go back to Blender, AX, delete everything, click here, A, delete, and Control V, run it. And now we actually get a really nice lemniscate made up of cubes. Of course, I think the cubes are a bit too large, so you could change the cube size over here, or you can use this as a base and then press A, change to individual origins, S, and just scale it down a little bit. And that looks really, really nice. However, most tutorials would end right here, but I think we have to go one step further because we do have our own brain. So let's try and use that. In this situation, suppose I want to change the cube to spheres. You could ask the AI to do that, but sometimes it's smarter to know exactly what's happening. We have the code here and we can see that the AI, whichever AI it is, will always give us comments as to what these lines are doing. So we can see that this particular line is adding a cube to the scene. So we see that it has a primitive cube add option. But let's say we want to convert this to UV spheres. All we have to do is bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this to the info panel by pressing this button over here. And now every single command that you make in the 3D viewport or anywhere in this Blender screen will pop up as a Python command over here. So if I wanted to add a sphere, I press shift A, mesh UV sphere, and instantly you get what the actual line is over here. So the code to add a UV sphere is the same thing, except it's primitive underscore UV underscore sphere underscore or add. So instead of primitive cube add, we have to change this. Along with that, you get all of the different parameters or arguments used within that function, which means you can specify the radius, whether it's entering edit mode, what it's aligned to, location and scale. However, you cannot mention a size. So if you try to just change this to UV underscore sphere, you'd get an error. So we have to change the size to radius as well. So let's try that out. UV underscore sphere and let's change size to radius. Once you've made those changes, you can go ahead and press AX delete followed by running the script. So now we get a lemniscate made out of spheres. And I think that's really cool to create simple shapes as long as you know exactly what the name of the shape is. And if you don't, you can always ask the AI itself, what is an infinity shape called mathematically? So let's try out the exact same thing with Google Bard. Once we've typed in the prompt, we can run it and Bard has now given us a code. So all we do is copy the code, go back to Blender, AX, X, delete, control A, delete, control V, run. So clearly Bard didn't work too well because we get an error saying set object has no attribute scale. So we can always go back and say, fix the previous code to remove the error set object has no attribute scale. And then run the prompt and it figures out why the issue was there and it fixes it. So let's actually try and copy the code and try it again. A, control A, delete, control V. Let's also delete everything from the 3D viewport and run it. So now we have a different error saying there's nothing called dimensions. And you can keep 
fixing all of this one by one, but it's all right. Google Bard is still in development. So let's try something else. Let's try and create some animations or let's create looping animations because that's what we do on this channel. So let's first go to ChatGPT and say, write a Blender code to create a cool looping animation. Hit the run and let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So now let's copy this code, go back to Blender, Control V, enter and run it. So now if we actually play the animation, you can see that we have a cube that's actually scaling up and down and it does perfectly loop. No, it does not perfectly loop. So that's something that didn't work out. It didn't perfectly loop, but let's try and get ChatGPT to fix it. Fix the previous code to make it seamlessly looping. Let's run the prompt and now let's copy the code. Let's go back, press A, delete, AX, delete, Control V and run. So here we get another error. So you can copy this and try and fix it using ChatGPT itself. But for now, we'll say ChatGPT failed because I'm giving each AI about two chances to fix itself. So all right, ChatGPT wasn't able to do that, but I have had situations where ChatGPT has successfully done it. Now let's go ahead and switch over to Bing. Often I've seen in Bing, the code doesn't work directly. So you have to come back to Bing and say, up did the code for Blender version 3.6 and it works perfectly after that. However, a simple way to get around that is by directly saying write a Blender code for version 3.6 that does so and so. so. Now let's copy this, go back to Blender, AX, delete, Control A, delete, Control V, run it. Now it says a cube hasn't been found. So let's actually just add in a cube and now let's try and running it. Okay, so it says pi is not defined and that's because they've used pi without importing math. Now, since I know that I can just say from math import pi and it should work, but you could always go back to Bing and say fix the above code to remove the error pi not defined and it should work. However, since I know it, I'm just going to go ahead and run with it. So there it's been done. Let's see whether it animates. And yeah, we just have a single rotation about the Z axis, which is perfectly looping, which is great, but I don't really like the animation. It's very simple. So let's go back and say, update the previous code to make the animation more complex. Make sure the animation is still perfectly looping. Now let's run it. All right. So now we can just copy this. We can go back, press AX, delete, Control A, delete, Control V and run it. Again, cube hasn't been found. So this particular code requires a cube to be present. Let's add that in and then run it. Again, pi is not defined because we didn't ask it to fix that. So let's say from math import pi and run it. So now we have a slightly more complex animation because it's also scaling and rotating, but it is not perfectly seamless. So we'd probably have to ask it to make sure that it's seamless again. Again, even though we specified it fairly well over here and it said that it is seamlessly looping. But that's all right. Those are a few things that we have to change manually. We always have complete access to the rotation speed, the number of frames and everything like that. So we might be able to try that later on. Let's see what Google Bard has for us. We've said write a Blender code to create a seamlessly looping animation in Blender. So it's given us a code. Let's copy it and then let's go back here. AX delete, Control A delete, Control V. Remember, if you actually like any of these codes, you can always create new texts so that you have all of the codes saved separately and you can always save the codes as python files somewhere else as well let's just run this and i'm assuming that this error is happening because it's not made for blender version 3.6 let's actually say can you modify the code or the previous code to work with blender version 3.6 let's run it and okay there have been a few changes so let's copy it come back Control v ax delete okay. there's still no attribute scale let's ask it to remove the error and see what it comes up with. Now let's copy the code, come back, control A, delete, control V, AX, delete, and run it. Set object has no attribute dimensions. So maybe we can view a few other drafts and just see what draft two says. None of them seem to be nice. So I really want Google Bard to succeed. Let's see what it comes up with. No, it's using dimensions itself. It's not fixing it. So I guess that's another loss for Google Bard. Of course, Google Bard is being updated very regularly. So I'm hoping it'll get much better really soon. Next, let's talk about the most powerful feature that you can use with AI, which is actually creating add-ons. So let's say I want a three point light system that I don't have currently. So I want to create a single button that I just click and a three point light like setup gets added in to whichever object is selected. Let's try that out with ChatGPT first. Let's say create a Blender add-on that adds a button to the side panel called 3PL. This button should add a three point lighting setup using area lights that are focused towards the selected object when the button is pressed. Let's run it. And remember these particular add-ons, you can always actually save them as a Python file and install the add-ons the same way you'd install any other add-on. The instructions are clearly given right after the code. However, you can also just run it as a script as we've been doing so long. So that way it'll work only on that specific Blender file. And if you close Blender and reopen it, it will no longer work. Let's just copy the code, go to Blender, press Control A, delete Control V, and let's see if this works. 
So it says module object has no attribute few 3dpt tools underscore object. So, okay, that's something that'll have to be asked to be changed later on. I'm not going to try that right now in chat GPT. Let's try Bing AI and see if it can create the same thing in one single shot. Let's just copy this, go to Bing AI, press control V and run it. Now Bing AI has created the code. So let's actually try and see what this does. So let's copy it. Let's go back to Blender. Let's press control A and delete. And then let's press control V and let's run this script. So now the script ran. So let's press N to open our side panel. And we do now have a new panel called 3PL. If you actually click create three point lighting, we get a three point lighting setup that is focused right on our object. If we move the object around, the lights do not follow the object. So let's move the object again and then try and press 3PL again. So it does create another three point lighting that is focused on the object. But if we move the object, it does not move. So let's ask Bing AI to make sure that the lights follow the object if the object is moved. Let's come here and say modify the previous code so that the lights follow the cube, the selected object, even after creation. Let's see if that works. I should have said the lights should point towards the selected cube even after creation instead of follow because maybe now the lights are just going to be changing its location but not the actual rotation. So let's actually see what happens. Yeah, it's actually changing the location and not the rotation. But for now, let's actually try and copy the code and see what it comes up with. When we run it, let's click create three point lighting and it says a driver was disabled. But since I know this driver, it's fine. Let's just allow execution for now and it is not working. If we take this and we move it, the lights do not move. So this is a worse code than the previous one. So let's go back and say the initial prompt again and then say make sure the lights automatically remain focused on the object even if the object is moved. Let's run it and let's see what this comes up with. So let's copy the code, go back to Blender, delete the code, control V and run the script. Now with our object selected or let's just delete everything, press shift A and add in a new object, create three point lighting. Now we have the three lights pointed towards the object. And if we move the objects, the lights point towards it as well, which is brilliant. If we go into rendered view, we can see how the lights are always pointed at the object, which I think is really cool because this might save you quite a bit of time. Granted, there are already add-ons present that creates the exact same setup. And in fact, a lot more customizable than this. But in case you have something that you do every single time and you want to create the setup in a single click, you can just do this. Let's try Google Bard. Let's test it out using the exact same prompt as given to Bing AI. And now that it's given us the code, let's copy the code. Let's walk into Blender, press Control A, delete Control B, and let's run the code. And no, this code does not work. It just creates three lights that are not following the object at all. So even that would have to be changed. But I'm sure that if you give the right prompt and try repeatedly to get rid of all of these issues, it will eventually succeed. So I think the best for creating add-ons was Bing AI from my experience previously as well. So let's leave it at that. Apart from this, AI can create various other things such as images. I have been able to get fractal images on planes by actually controlling the pixels using Bing AI before, but I haven't been able to do that ever since. So let's say create a fractal material in Blender version 3.6. And in this case, it just tells me to use the Musgrave texture. So let's actually say write a code to create a fractal on a plane in Blender 3.6. And now this is using the Musgrave texture itself. So it's not what happened the other day, but the other day it successfully changed the pixels on an image. It created a new image texture. It changed the pixels on the image to form a fractal, which was really cool, but I haven't been able to replicate that yet on any software. Let's just see what this does. Let's just press Control A, delete Control B, and let's say a mesh plane and let's run it. Okay, so it actually added in a plane. Let's see what this looks like. And all right, we have some sort of a Musgrave texture. You can always play around with the set settings in your shader editor to make this better, but it's all right. You can ask AI to make these tileable as well, which is fairly cool, but I've had low success rate with it, although it does happen sometimes. So I think to conclude, we can clearly see that AI is fairly capable of doing quite a few things that would have manually taken us a long time. However, to actually fine tune it independent of whichever AI you're using, whether it's ChatGPT, Bing AI, or Google Bard, you're going to have to keep asking it to make the necessary changes because it's not going to get it right in the first shot. Apart from that, even though AI is really capable, it's not going to be taking our jobs anytime soon because there's a lot of detail that AI just will not be able to get as easily as us humans can. So definitely don't give up hope learning Blender thinking that AI is going to be doing everything very soon because AI is still a long way from taking all of your jobs. So with that, let's keep creating amazing animations using Blender and I release videos every single day. So do check out previous videos to give yourself some inspiration and also learn cool techniques on Blender to create stunning animations. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and stay creative.